Hi guys, welcome back to the Green Team D No Gauge. We are still here with steel modelling and we're progressing with the depot building. I've been making this video over the last few days, bits and pieces, and it was easier that way than trying to go in sequence. And this is where we've got to. Sit back, relax, enjoy, and uh, I'll take you through how we've got to this position with a few photos, a bit of video. Hopefully it won't be too long. Just remember guys that uh, all my videos are indexed in playlists on the YouTube channel. So if you're following a particular subject of mine, videos are easy to do. The videos are easy to find. So please like, subscribe and share, ask questions. And I'll see you at the other end of this video. So the issue I have here, which I hadn't thought about previously, is these are three back walls here, here and here are made level and flush with the top of the white wall here. What that doesn't allow me to do is add a roof. So what I intend to do today first off is to remove those three walls there and reduce them in height by about five millimeters so that I can add a roof. I've also got to make a partition wall to go across here which I will add at the same time. I would prefer to use my standing knife but I can't find it so I'm just going to carefully slice down here with my scalpel Try not to break anything. That was quite easy actually. And again over here. Keeping the hand out of the way. Easy as that. And basically all I'm gonna do now is take about five mil off probably to this line here of these blocks, take all the bottom layer of blocks all the way along and across the wall and for that I've got my belt sander so I shall just draw up a pencil line to follow and all the way around so I can just go and get my belt sander and we can sit this on the top and sand it down the ocean is rough, we've got the rain again, but that's fine because we're under the carport. One eternity later. So now we have the reduced in height piece of back wall here, which will just slot back in where it came from. And we shall stick it in. Using an offcut of MDF and my sander outside, I've made this nice little internal wall that just slots in like that. But before I'm going to put that in and glue it. I'm going to mark it vertically where I want it, which will be there. For, for a guide, put a little line there and then I'm going to extend that across to here. Just so I know where I'm going to line it up to. Now that the walls are dry, I've got to make the floor. Now, what I have here on the floor is some thicker MDF. I've got to bring the floor level up to the bottom of the door, which is uh, the concrete floor level outside the shed. Now that the walls are dry, these two rooms, uh, because they've got doorways, uh, require floors. This one won't, because that's just going to have a light in the roof and a frosted window, so you won't see inside the room. 
but I need to bring the floor up level with what is the shed floor outside the building. Um, and these rays, piece of MDF here, a slip it underneath, scribe round the inside of the floor. One floor. I'm not going to worry about showing you all of it, I'm just going to cut it out and sand it down and glue it in the building. Here's the floor straight off the belt sander. Cut to the line and would you believe it, first time, beautiful fit. So I'll just get a bit of PVA on there and we'll get him stuck in. So there we have our first floor in a room. We'll just again wait for the glue to dry, give it five minutes and then I can happily move everything around without risk of dislodging it and I'll do the floor for that room. I have started on the concrete beamwork for the water tank part of the building and I've also if you see here I put a little hole through the wall. Now what I've got is my warm white LEDs I've got some spare ones of those so I'm going to use those to illuminate the inside of the building. As you can see from the photos that have just been shown, we have moved on from that last little video clip where I had just stuck on that piece of wood framing there. Well, I continued with the cross brace pieces there and there under the windows, added the window seals, given everything a, a base coat of Humbrol 121 for the concrete color, um, not a gray color because old concrete was more of a browny orangey color. So that's the base colour of which we'll start adding different tones onto the top of. And resprayed the white through the depot building itself here. So these two offices here have got the floors in and the interior of the rooms painted white. Uh, this is a clear window, this is an open door, so there will be detail in these two rooms. This room here, however, is a frosted glass uh, window in there so there won't be any detail in there but the room is just painted white inside it doesn't have a floor and at the bottom here is the stairwell I believe to the upper two floors within the water tower part of the building I'm just going to quickly insert a photograph here for you to have a quick look at and it will show the colors and textures on the brickwork of the water tank part of the building and structure Because this part will be stand off, um, you're not going to be looking at all super close detail on that part of the building. You won't be able to see it because of the shed roof, but it's going to be painted and I'm going to attempt to make some uh, brickwork patterns on it. I've made a stencil of a bit of styrene and we're going to practice putting some brick effect on the wall. So here is my stencil. It is three bricks high, course of and uh, so that allows me to line up the top and bottom bar. It's twisted 90 degrees on the end so it can butt up against the wall and it's literally, I am just going to use some mat 162. I'm going to start lining it up at the top in the corner. I'm going to stir this up once I've my screwdriver. I've selected a square 
and brush. It's not in the best condition, it doesn't matter because we're going to be dry brushing, which is literally a tiny amount of paint on the brush. Brush off as much as possible. And then fingers crossed. One course of bricks, and then we cover up that course. And repeat. You've got to remember this is a standoff colour. We're not after doing every single brick. We're just going for an effect. And we have two courses of bricks and I'm going to just continue going down and seeing how we go catch you in a bit. Right, well, there we go. We're always going one step forward, two step back, as it were. Having got the drawing out to actually work out where the roof lays and drawing it all out, it's 70 degrees of vertical for the windows and 20 degrees from the bottom for the roof. I just come looking at this. I've missed out some concrete beams that run across the top and run across here. I'm going to zoom in there. As you can see on the drawing, concrete beams going across. So I'm going to have to pause this for a second, come and put these beams back on, paint them, and then we'll work it with the bricks. But they are the bricks. Uh, what do you reckon? What do you reckon? That's close? We will be close? I think it may be a little bit darker. I could always... I'm thinking of going over the top of them with another shade being matte 118 is what I've got there. So I shall put these concrete beams in. Now I've got the roof worked out and the bricks are only above the roof because down here it's all just black and dirty and uh, will be very little detail up here just dirt streaked and shaded so there won't actually be much to see above this white line it also appears i'm supposed to have a door in but i'm not going to worry about that i'm just going to make a paper door stick it on the front and make it look like it's there because like i say this north light window is the only way you're going to be able to see it once the front is put on the, the uh, layout. There we have you guys. That's where we're up to. So, as usual, one step forward, two steps back. As you always two steps forward, one step back. We'll see. Um, so, yeah. I'll do the uh, bits of concrete beam work and bits and pieces off camera. So you don't have to watch all that. I think you've got the gist of how we're going with it. And I'll catch you next time. So enjoy your modelling. Like and subscribe if you haven't done so. Comments below. And I'll catch you later. See ya.